In chapter 1130, we see a picture of Luffy on the news from the Egghead incident. If you look a little closer, there's a mysterious X drawn on Luffy's arm. But when we look back at Luffy during the Egghead arc, we never see him with an X on his arm. What if I told you this mysterious X leads us down a massive rabbit hole? And the conclusion we reach at the bottom? Vivi is about to become the next straw hat. But first, a lot of work goes into these videos. If you'd like to support us so we can go full time and post more videos like this, consider leaving a super thanks donation or becoming a member of the channel. A simple like also goes a long way. Thank you. When you think of an X on Luffy's arm, what do you think of? I immediately think of the X that all the Straw Hats put on their arms during the Alabasta arc. I think of Nefertari Vivi. The reason they did this was because Bonchan could transform into any of them, but if they all had a specific mark that they all knew of, they would be able to know if they came across the real version or the fake. This X became a symbol for the Straw Hat crew during Alabasta, and at the end of the arc we see the iconic scene with Vivi staying behind to help her country. The Straw Hats all throw up their arms showing the X, a sign of their friendship and their adventures together. A sign that Vivi will always be an ally and most importantly a straw hat. Now you may be saying, okay, so the X on Luffy's arm is a reference to the Alabasta arc. So what? Why is that important? To the world, Vivi has gone missing, but in chapter 1074, it's finally revealed that Vivi has escaped and is hiding with Big News Morgans on his flying ship. We also know that Morgans was attacked by the world government as well. They sent Cypher Poe after him. So in a way, Morgans and Vivi are both people who the world government are after. There are many times we see Vivi get upset at how Morgans portrays Luffy unfairly in the news. After chapter 1124, many people speculated that Vivi had convinced Morgans to go easy on Luffy and tell the truth. But no, what we actually see is Morgans will be Morgans as he demonizes Luffy for the sake of chaos and clout. I love this about Morgans because he's such a unique and powerful force for One Piece's world building. But as much as I love Morgans, Vivi doesn't seem to agree. If Morgans is going to continue doing things his way, well we've reached the point where Vivi is going to start doing things her way. Wapo keeps warning Vivi here because you know, they're kind of being hunted down by the world government and they're stuck in the sky. Chill out Vivi, if Morgans wants to he could just throw you overboard and that's a long drop. Vivi may not be able to get through to Morgans but there is one person Person she knows she can trust in an emergency and that is Monkey D. Luffy. So Vivi came up with a plan. She decides to leave a little clue in Morgan's newspaper. Something that would seem like an obvious error and something only her and the Straw Hats will be able to understand. Vivi was the one who secretly put an X on Luffy's arm. This is Vivi sending a message to the Straw Hats, a message that she is alive and needs their help. It's also possible that Morgans did this favor helping Vivi after she simply asked him, but I highly doubt this because why would Morgans listen to Vivi? Why would he change the way that he runs his newspaper? But maybe Morgans is like, okay, fine, I'll agree to this little favor. We can put an X on Luffy's arm so you can get into contact with him. Maybe Morgans really does have a bit of empathy for the poor girl who just lost her father and is being hunted down by the government. And while this is possible, it's still probably unlikely. When we first saw Vivi with Morgans, we see that Morgans crew actually really likes Vivi. We even see this one person fangirling over her since she's the princess of the lineages of the 20 kingdoms. Maybe the fangirl who gave her clothes to Vivi was an editor who helped Vivi add in the X during the editorial process of creating the newspaper. This might be how Morgans didn't notice. Vivi could have easily used used her charm and royal status to do this behind Morgan's back. Vivi is pretty sneaky, let's not forget that she infiltrated Broke Works during the Alabasta Saga. While she's not strong, she is smart. Coming up with this plan really fits her character and I love that while yes in a way Vivi is a stereotypical damsel in distress here, Oda pulls it off in such a fashion that makes you fall in love with Vivi as she's still doing it in such a cool way. Luffy was fully ready to attack Marijua to go and try to save Vivi the moment he found out what happened. Vivi probably knew Luffy would have this type of reaction. More importantly than letting the Straw Hats know she's alive, she's also telling them where she is and who she's with. 
She's telling them that she's with Big News Morgans by leaving a hint in his newspaper that only they could decipher. Big News Morgans is the only person in the world who sends out newspapers, so it should be easy to figure this out. This also wouldn't be the first time the Straw had to use a code only they could understand as a form of private communication. Remember, the Straw Hats at the time skip had a secret code, 3D2Y. The original plan was for the Straw Hats to meet up in three days, so Luffy created this message so the Straw Hats could reunite after two years of them training so that they could be prepared for the new world. I love these little codes that everyone in the crew can understand because it just goes to show how close the Straw Hats really are. This little detail I notice is another cool coincidence. Oda chose an X when he marked out the 3D in 3D2Y, just like Vivi is now using an X in this message. But when Robin sees the X on Luffy's arm, it seems not everyone will be able to decipher this message immediately. I believe Robin will in time, I mean that's kind of the point of Robin's character, that's what she does for a living. And we can see she's on to something as she's really the only one to notice something seems off and fishy. But then there's Frankie, Jimby, and Brooke who don't seem to notice at all. It's in Robin's nature to look into things like this. But this is also a hint from Oda. There's a real reason why Nico Robin is the only one to recognize this X on the arm. Frankie, for example, wasn't introduced into the story until chapter 329, 112 chapters after the Alabasta arc concluded. Nico Robin may have not been a crew member yet during the Alabasta arc, but she did play a huge role. Robin snuck her way onto the Straw Hat ship, which means she probably saw them throw their hands up, showing off the X at some point. We know Robin is very perceptive, she even has a habit of being nosy and spying on people with her devil fruit powers, especially at this time because she she wasn't even an official member of the Straw Hat crew yet. I'm sure Nico Robin picked up on the fact that the Straw Hats all had this X on their arm at some point during the Alabasta arc. She was even there with Luffy because she saved him from Crocodile after he nearly lost his life. And she was also there again with Luffy when he defeated Crocodile the final time. I'm sure that at some point she would have seen the X on Luffy's arm. Using Robin and Frankie is very sneaky by Oda because yes, Robin is perceptive enough to pick up on the fact that Luffy has this weird unnatural X on his arm in the newspaper, but she also wasn't close enough to the Straw Hats as a crew member yet to remember the exact reason why the X is so important. The current Straw Hats who are with Robin are all Straw Hats who joined later after the Alabasta arc. So Robin was kind of the perfect person that Oda could have used here to hint at the mystery while also not giving it all away. I honestly have no idea how Oda does all this, he is truly a man of pure genius. So Vivi is trying to get the attention of the Straw Hats with an X, what does all this mean? Does this mean that the Straw Hats are going to go save Vivi? We saw how concerned the original group of Straw Hats were when they learned of the news of Vivi. But I'm not sure we can just hit pause in the middle of the Elbaf arc. Especially since it seems like the Straw Hat crew will be separated for a while. Maybe Robin will continue to think about this ex and eventually realize it. Once she reaches the Straw Hat, she could tell them about the situation and then they'll try to contact Morgans. If that doesn't work, then they can try to track her down using some help from the people at Elbaf. And who knows, maybe this is where Luffy's fleet finally comes in and helps. But there's actually one other character who knows about the X on the arm that we're all forgetting about. His name is Mr. Two. I'm talking about... Bonchan. Bonchan was so emotional after seeing the Straw Hats say goodbye to Vivi, showing that X as they raise it to the sky. In fact, he was so captivated by this moment that he risked his own life so they could escape. So helping Vivi reconnect with the Straw Hats wouldn't be something new or out of the ordinary for Bonchan. We also know that Bonchan is still alive. A lot of people don't realize this, especially anime only watchers, because Oda revealed this in a cover story. Now, during Vegapunk's speech, we see Dofi and Magellan talking about how they might have to leave Impel down or at least move up towards a higher level. This does seem to hint at Magellan saving the prisoners and maybe all of the prisoners escaping at some point. And this leaves a perfect opportunity for Bonchan to escape. I mean, he kind of has to because there is a hidden layer in Impel down where he's hiding. If the entire prison is about to flood, he has to get up out of there as soon as possible. Now, if Bonchan does escape and gets a chance to check out the newspaper, we know he has two major connections. Luffy and Dragon. 
Because of Ivankov and all the secret prisoners of Vimpel Town, there's a good chance that Bon Chan could join the Revolutionary Army if he was ever to escape the prison. But he's also very good friends with Luffy, so some could say that he might become a member of the Straw Hats or a member of the fleet. Now imagine if Bon Chan was able to contact the Revolutionaries after escaping Vimpel Town and seeing the news of Vivi and realizing this X. And Sabo is also the one who knows the truth about Cobra and Vivi. I think Sabo would probably jump on this immediately to try to help out in some way. We might see a Sabo and Bonchan team up mission where they go and rescue Vivi. This would also be a major win for the Revolutionary Army as they have the biggest wild card politically in an ally with Vivi. I could also see Bonchan directly contacting the Straw Hat crew, but once again, who knows if they'll even pick up since they're currently on a crazy adventure in Elbath. But while Luffy, Bonchan, or even Sabo saving Vivi are all exciting possibilities, what if I told you that Vivi is the one who comes to Elbath? But before we explain, in this subscribe if you're not already for future one piece videos just like this and don't forget to like the video one thing we know right now about morgans is that the world government is probably coming after him we mentioned earlier how cp0 attacked him after the reverie and we also know that the gorosei were upset with morgans because he showed luffy's gear 5 form the truth about luffy's secret fruit and on his bounty he also wouldn't remove the d from luffy's name and now he's hiding away a certain nefertati princess from the world government who Emu seems to be heavily targeting. Yeah, it doesn't seem like Morgans is on the best terms with the world government. I'd even argue that he's one of the biggest threats to the world government because Morgans has a monopoly over the news, giving him the complete power to sway the perception of the government and their enemies. I'm sure the world government will also soon realize that he's hiding Vivi, and so I think Morgans might need to first and foremost find a safe place to drop off Vivi. This has to be a place where the world government won't attack them. And where does this bring us? Well, it actually brings us to Elbath. Let me explain. We all know Morgans has a monopoly on the news, but one thing people seem to forget about Morgans is that he's also one of the big figures of the underworld. He's essentially a Yonko crime lord, so powerful that he's able to do whatever he wants. This means Morgans has incredibly shady connections throughout the world. And now another thing that people tend to forget is Elbath's deep ties to the underworld. During Big Mom's flashback, we saw just how how corrupt Elbeth is through Mother Caramel. Mother Caramel is like the Diddy or Epstein of Elbeth. I plan on making a much bigger video on all this, but for now, let's just consider the fact that we have a human trafficking ring going on where many Elbeth giants seem to be complicit. I'm not sure how deep the crime runs within Elbeth, but this is already as crazy as it gets, so why would we assume that there's not a lot more of this crime still going on? And there's also Shanks a Yonko of the sea, a true pirate. Shanks is no hero, and I don't think Shanks is evil, but I wouldn't be surprised if Shanks was also in some ways involved with some kind of shady black market activity or dealings. Hopefully not as bad as Mother Caramel. Now if the theories are right about the Adam Tree also being Elbaf's tree, well Frankie did mention how the bark of the Adam Tree sells on the black market. I think you guys see where I'm going with this, Morgans is about to make a pit stop at Elbaf. And we're finally about to see just how corrupt and criminal Elbeth really is. Morgans may even smuggle off Vivi in some kind of trafficking deal to some very shady figures. I know a princess who's gone missing and also wanted by the world government would pay a very hefty price. Another cool little detail about Vivi rejoining the Straw Hats at Elbeth is that she was also with Luffy at Little Garden. During this arc, we see Vivi and Luffy become friends with the legendary giants Dory and Brogy. And maybe because of this, it's Dory and Brogy who save Vivi during the arc after she's smuggled into trafficking by some giants. Maybe Nico Robin is the one who uses her nosy tendencies to overhear a conversation about this black market deal and so that's how they go and start looking for Vivi. Now maybe one of the biggest reasons why I also think Vivi has to rejoin the Straw Hats at Elbeth is because if not Elbeth, then where? Elbeth seems to be the final major island in One Piece before we branch off into full-scale war, where the Straw Hats begin charging into Marijua or Laftail or begin fighting Blackbeard. I'm just not sure how much more exploring of the new world we'll be doing after the Elbeth arc. And with Elbeth being known as the Land of War, I even think that the final war will take place at Elbeth, at least some of it. Maybe the final war begins at Elbeth and then goes straight into chaos right after. And so Vivi, she needs time to have a real adventure with the new crewmates as well. I just want to see some real quality time with her and the crewmates before we devolve into non-stop fights. 
Especially because Vivi isn't strong. She is weak as duck. Shout out Karu. And maybe if Vivi doesn't come to Elbef, at some point during the Elbef arc, we see the Struts meet up and they make a plan where Robin, Frankie, Jimby, and Brooke all leave Elbef to go find Vivi. This will leave us more room to focus on Luffy, Usopp, Nami, Zoro, and Sanji during Elbef, who seem to be the characters that Oda wants to focus the most in this arc on. He already split up the group since the beginning, so why not just keep it this way? And again, this would be perfect for Vivi to grow a bond with the other new crew members. I think Robin and Vivi especially need some time to talk things out and bond since Robin was an ally of Crocodile during the Alabasta arc. We did see Vivi trust Luffy to make the right decision during the Water 7 arc when it's revealed that Robin has finally joined the crew officially. I think if Robin can explain her story to Vivi, they can grow a lot closer. They can grow a more trusting bond. Vivi is very sympathetic, so I'm sure she could become great friends with Robin. She'll probably like Frankie and Jimbe a lot too, but she might be creeped out by Brooke. Now coming back to Vivi sending out the message of the X, this also reminds me of why Vivi will be the final Straw Hat. First of all, Vivi is effectively already a Straw Hat pirate. The moment her blue feminist head steps on the foot of the ship, she immediately becomes a pirate again. And by the way, it's not like she's got anything better to do back home. Emu wants her dead. Her country is in a crisis. Alright, well, <laughs> maybe there are a few better things to do, but the time will come for Vivi to save Alabasta. The moment you return, Emu Emu is about to wipe Alabasta off the face of the earth. Vivi's message was an X. This X is specifically connected to Vivi's character at this point, as we mentioned earlier. But another way you could look at this X is like 10, like the Roman numeral. This X symbol foreshadows Vivi being the final and 10th straw hat to officially join the crew. When Luffy first left for his journey, he also says that he wanted to find at least 10 crewmates. So it would be really cool if Luffy gets his 10 crewmates before the story ends. And I don't think we'll have any more time to add people after Vivi since it seems the story will start coming to an end after Elbaf. This whole X-10 foreshadowing is totally something I'd see Oda doing. It's crazy though to think that Oda made the iconic X scene all the way back in Alabasta and it's turning out to be so important in the final saga of One Piece. One thing I'm really looking forward to seeing with Vivi's character is how she learns the truth about her father, Emu, and even the truth about the Nefertari family. You just know that at some point this is all going to be revealed to her. After Cobra's death, Princess Vivi is now in line to rule Alabasta's kingdom. She technically is currently the queen of Alabasta. I know Sanji won't have a problem with this, but it's definitely going to take some time for me to get used to saying that. Alabasta is one of, if not the most important kingdoms in the One Piece world. The Nefertaris are technically royalty of the highest degree. Although they are not exactly celestial dragons, their history is definitely checkered like the Will of D, fitting in with the Nefertari being revealed as D-Clan members. We do know at some point they were involved with the 20 Kingdom Alliance of the Void Century. Now I like to think that Vivi is a prophetic counterpart to the Void Century's Queen Lily. Maybe this is why Emu is so afraid of Vivi. We see Emu has Luffy, Shirahoshi, Blackbeard, and Vivi in his hands implying they are all figures who Emu Emu is concerned with. Luffy is Joy Boy, a prophetic figure. Shirahoshi is Poseidon. We don't know much about Blackbeard yet, but it does seem like if this is a trend, Vivi could be another prophetic figure. And it's almost like these four characters are the ones who would be the most pivotal in the destruction of Emu and the Celestial Dragons. Queen Vivi will be a beloved figure in the world. She has a kind heart. She is beautiful. She is the opposite of the Celestial Dragons. She's very much so a political figure for the people of Alabasta. When Vivi eventually turns on the world government, this will not only turn the Straw Hats and her country on the world government, but her influence is so powerful, speaking the truth, exposing evil, that Vivi could be the Straw Hat that breaks the camel's back. Anyways, the point is, Vivi could really influence the world to turn on Emu and the Celestial Dragons in a massive way. Think about how she could find out this information, maybe from Sabo who witnessed the event. King Cobra tells Sabo with his final dying words to give a message to Vivi and Luffy. He says, tell them the Nefertaris are also D-Clan. I finally see a way forward for Alabasta. The man just basically told Sabu that the path forward for Alabasta is to ally with the D-Clan members. And of course, we know which D-Clan members he's talking about. Not only Monkey D. Dragon, who is a leader of the Revolutionary Army that Sabo is a part of. You know, you have Sabo here helping Cobra and even saying the 20 Kings are not Dragon's enemy. It's these weird demonic old dudes. But you also know for a fact, since he brought up Luffy 
Luffy's name, he's talking about Vivi allying with Luffy specifically. And in a way, maybe Cobra is even saying Vivi should become a Straw Hat Pirate. So what do you think? Will Vivi finally join Luffy's crew? I also think Vivi will be a huge importance for One Piece's events after the story ends. She's a D, she's a royal queen, she's a pirate now, she'll be looked up to as a hero in many ways. And it really starts to change people's perceptions on the Straw Hat crew and the D clan specifically. And for the future political structure of the world, Vivi will definitely have a huge impact on decision making here moving forward. I'm not really into shipping in One Piece, but I've always said that Vivi and Koza will probably end up together. This will make Koza the king of Alabasta. This will also be important for Alabasta's political power as Koza is a leader already, a revolutionary leader who fought for its people. He's someone who's a true patriot for his country like Vivi. And Cobra may have even foreshadowed Koza one day ruling Alabasta, telling Koza that Vivi is way too naive and innocent to be leading Alabasta. She's too soft, but together Koza and Vivi could be a perfect combo. Vivi's soft kindness for her country paired with a tough military perspective from Koza. We also have no clue what happened to Vivi's mom. Maybe similar to how Shira Hoshi is part of a mermaid princess prophecy, maybe Vivi is also part of a prophecy that speaks of a queen of Alabasta one day exposing the truth about Emu and the Nefertari family. Maybe Emu knew of this and had Vivi's mother assassinated because she believed that Vivi's mother would be this queen of prophecy. Oda never explained what happened to Vivi's mother, but after the mainstream narrative about Cobra and Vivi's story at the reverie being so so wrong? You never know what could really have happened with Vivi's mother. And if there really was this political conspiracy for Vivi's mother, well that's an entire another rabbit hole worth going down. Maybe the passing of Vivi's mother is what made Cobra really start to question everything. That may have been the moment when he began looking into the world government and the truth of the Nefertari family line. And then later when Robin came and explained the truth of the pony glyphs to him, that's why he was so accepting and willing to look into everything. I don't think Vivi's mother has to be important, but just considering she's a queen of the Nefertari family, there's definitely room for something sinister here if Oda does want to go this route. Earlier, we mentioned how Luffy was prepared to launch a war against the Celestial Dragons by attacking Marijua after learning the news of Vivi and Cobra. The only reason Luffy stopped was because Zoro held him back. And this was probably for the best because although Luffy has become incredibly powerful after Wano, he still isn't strong enough for the entire world government. But the Straw Hat Pirates have essentially already entered into war with the world government after after Luffy and his crew defend Dr. Vegapunk and even fought against the Gorosei. And who came to help Luffy during Egghead? The Elbath Giants. You see, after Elbath, Luffy will finally be ready. Vivi officially joining the crew here will also make huge headlines and shift the world politically in so many different ways. And Luffy may also gain the most powerful army ready for a full scale war once he wins over the hearts of the Elbath Giants. And who knows, maybe Vivi, as she charmed her trust with Dorian Brogy, will also be someone who, alongside Luffy, wins over all the giants. But one thing we do know is when the Straw Hats do get the giants on their side, they're always prepared for war. And who better to follow into the sunset of war than the greatest warrior, their own hero, the warrior of liberation, Sun God Nika. And tying Vivi back to the Elbaf arc, she's weak as duck, remember? So I've always wondered if Vivi returns, will she get a devil fruit? Many people have theorized that Vivi could get Kuma's Niku Niku Nomi, the paw fruit. And I do really like that theory since it does seem like Queen Lily could have used that devil fruit during the Void Century to spread the pony glyphs around the world to specific locations allied with the D Clan and the Ancient Kingdom. But now that Kuma seems to somehow have survived the Egghead arc, I don't think he's going anywhere. If Oda was going to kill off Kuma, Egghead would have been the perfect opportunity. So no, I don't think Vivi will get Kuma's fruit. Instead, if Vivi is coming back to Elbath, this opens up the possibilities to a devil fruit from Elbath. But I do agree, Vivi seriously needs some kind of devil fruit or power up this late into the story if she's joining the Straw Hats. And there aren't enough ducks for me to emphasize this. We are now at the end of the new world and coming up is the end game of One Piece. I'm talking about Blackbeard, Pirates, World Government, and who knows what else. 
We're talking full scale war and the most powerful characters in One Piece will be in Luffy's way of becoming Pirate King. Vivi right now is way too weak, she's even weaker than Usopp. A Devil Fruit would be the fastest and easiest way to fix this problem, giving her a big power up immediately after eating it. So what do you think would be a good Devil Fruit for Vivi? I have some ideas but I can't wait to hear what you guys come up with in the comments. Going with the Norse theme, what if Vivi receives a Valkyrie Devil Fruit, transforming her into Elbaf's ultimate female warrior? I really like this because of her guardian Pell and the influence he's had over her. You know, we all hate the fact that Pell survived the explosion during the Alabasta arc. Yeah, it was completely BS, but still, I love that Vivi was inspired by such an act of bravery. And what does Pell's devil fruit powers involve? They involve speed, toughness, and most importantly, flight. In Vivi's mind, Pell is the great warrior of Alabasta, so a Valkyrie-like transformation could really sue her in her fighting style. I imagine a Valkyrie zone devil fruit could maybe give Vivi a Sailor Moon-like transformation where it gives her an instant clothes swap into Valkyrie armor. She could also get the ability to fly and maybe even get wings. This fruit could also boost her strength, speed, and endurance, and she might even get some broken form of magic from this devil fruit. Now, if she is a Valkyrie, I would also like to see Vivi get her hands on some kind of weapon, maybe a sword during the Elbaf arc. And I mean, what a better place for Vivi to get a huge power-up than Elbaf. She might even be able to get into a quick training arc here so she's not completely useless as a fighter. And also, just being around this much war and powerful characters, this many action-packed battles during Elbaf should also be good for her. Now going away from the Norse mythology route, it's also very possible that Vivi gets a devil fruit connected to Egyptian mythology instead of Norse. This is because Alabasta seems to be inspired by Egypt. You have the giant desert island, the pyramids, the tombs, ancient languages with cool symbols, and both Pell and Chaka have devil fruits which connect to Egyptian gods. We made a theory a while ago about how Emu could have been inspired by Medjid, but it would be really funny if Vivi ate a Medjid type devil fruit. Not only would it be broken, but it would also be freaking hilarious and fit in perfectly with Oda's humor and creativity. Oda could really go wild with her fights and power with this fruit. But there's also so many other types of cool gods or mythical creatures from Egyptian mythology. And it doesn't even have to be a mythical zone. It could just be a paramecia connecting to Egypt in some way. Or it could be like a normal zoan fruit which is a popular animal from Egypt. Or like in Pell's case, I guess he's just a bird, but really it's a reference to a god who had that humanoid animal fusion look. I think a mythical zone could probably be better since you could instantly scale her up as fast as possible. Really, the more broken the fruit, the better. You know, in Whiskey Peak, when Vivi had that wacky design that barely even looks like Vivi anymore, she did have some kind of hypnotizing powers. So maybe Oda gives Vivi a devil fruit with these kind of abilities and psychic powers. I really like the Valkyrie devil fruit idea, but if she doesn't get something this powerful, well, I'm gonna be honest, she's completely ducked. Wait, that's it. What if Vivi gets the duck duck fruit. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to share it and leave a like. And here's an even better video where we reveal Monkey D Dragon's Devil Fruit.